Hi right, guys, this is Mark. Um, wife is with me. She was given a dream the other night that we uh, both feel led to share. I'm giving her more of a nudge than she probably <laughs> wants, but uh, we are going to share it. She's asked not to be on the camera because she's not a camera person, uh, unlike her husband. So with that being <laughs> said, uh, the night after our wedding ceremony anniversary, which was 10-4, um, she was given a vision, a dream, and uh, I'm going to let her take over. Miss Kristen, why don't uh, you share? This is so hard. Okay. So I will preface this by saying, look, my whole life I've had bad dreams. Like, I've never had a good one. Like, so much so that, like, for a long time I didn't want to go to sleep because they were so bad. And, um, anyway, so for a long time I've wanted a good dream, and I've never had one. And so, the other night I had the best of dreams, so there's that. Um, anyway, I'll just get into it by saying the dream started out where I'm on this overpass and I'm driving. And I know what that at least some of the boys were in the back seat and I don't know who because of course I was driving so I was looking ahead um but I know that I was in Memphis which is you know where I was raised and and I know this because I looked to the right of this overpass and I saw the pyramid and granted I did not see the Bass Pro sign um so I mean I don't know what that means but Either way, I'm looking at the pyramid, and at the top of the pyramid, um, I will preface this by saying that the whole sky was just blanketed in gray clouds, and then the clouds were so low that it didn't look like there was more than maybe, maybe 50 feet between the top of the pyramid and the start of the cloud cover. And between the clouds and the top of the pyramid was just constant, I, I want to say lightning, but lightning isn't constant. It was, it was more like, you know, the Nikola Tesla, like constant, just bolt, lightning bolts that don't let go. They're just, you know, a constant zigzag of light, almost like the, the pyramid was like charging or something. And and it was weird because it wasn't a storm. Like, there was no rain. There was no thunder. There was no lightning anywhere else in the sky. It was just that, that constant elect electrical bolt, multiple bolts attached to the top of the pyramid. And I remember saying in the dream, like, I wonder if Mark is seeing this. I wonder if he's seeing this. <laughs> like, because I must have been talking to the boys in the back seat. And then right after I said that a few times, and I'm still driving on this overpass, um, I noticed that the whole sky starts having these, these lights start falling from the sky at like different intervals and they're falling pretty slowly, but I can only compare them to stars, like just thousands of stars falling all at once, but like at different intervals, like some were higher, some were lower, but they're all falling slowly. And then then in front of the car, I had to stop looking at the pyramid and the stars because in front of the car, there was this, this small gray cloud that appeared right in front of the car. And it wasn't like fog. It was literally like a condensed gray cloud that looked really weird. And the second the car hit it, and there was no way to not hit it, and the second the car hit it, I felt, I don't know how to describe it, I felt like my my whole body felt like it was just full of like energy or something and the whole car goes up like it like it hit like the the cloud was a ramp and it just shoots up like at the end of Greece or something like it just shoots up into the air and then I knew the second that the car shot into the air that this was the rapture. And I can't describe why, especially because I'm still in a car. I know that makes no sense. Um, but the second I thought that, my body was no longer in the car. Like, somehow my body was out of the car. And I remember 
like feeling my phone in my right hand and immediately dropping it because I'm like, I don't need my stupid phone. Like, why am I holding my phone? So I dropped it and then just threw my hands in the air. And when I threw my hands in the air, I didn't actually see my hands. So it's, it's a weird, it's a weird description, but like I knew my arms and hands were in the air, even though I couldn't see them. And I, all I could say was, thank you, Jesus, thank you, God, thank you, Jesus, thank you, God, over and over. And the feeling was, was incredible. I'm sorry. Maybe you should pop it. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, the the closest thing I can describe is my stomach specifically felt like I was falling, even though visibly, visibly I could see that I was going up. But that was the only thing that I could describe to something that I've actually felt before, because the rest of my body felt like physically I felt like I was just so full of energy and I couldn't contain it and it's hard to describe I like I it was just the best the best of feelings and I know I'll never feel it again like while I'm here it was it was that good and then and um emotionally though if I never like I was so full of joy that like I couldn't contain it there was no you know I've always thought about the rapture like you know I'll be worried about who's gonna be there and all these other worries that I was gonna have because I have them you know now but in the moment of the dream there wasn't any it it was just pure thankfulness that I was going that that I was allowed to go, that I was good enough to go, was all that it was going through my mind, and I just couldn't stop thanking him for it. And I will, I will say that I, towards the end of the dream, I had this one funny thought: was one of my sons who's like kind of scared of everything. I had, he's my youngest, and all. That thought did go through my head. I was like, oh man, he's not going to like this feeling. Because it was part, because like I said, part of it was like the feeling of falling. And I was like, oh no, I don't know. if I wonder if he'll like this. And I was, and that was like a funny, like, you know, just because he's so young too. And I'm just hoping that, you know, he'll understand the joy of it. But of course he will. Because experiencing it in the dream, I had no worries. Like not one. I my my brain couldn't fathom a worry or or a fear that just it wasn't an emotion that was possible and uh, yeah i guess that was the whole thing and then and then i remember waking up and this was of course just a couple of days ago and i woke up and i was so upset <laughs> cuz i woke up and i was like you know what did i do wrong in the rapture process to make god throw me back here <laughs> And I know that sounds terrible, but I was like, you know, I was ready. Like, I was like, I made it, you know. And then I wake up home, and I'm like, you know, I, I love it here. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, it took me a second to realize it was just, I felt it all over. And so it took me it took me a second to realize that, that it was a dream and it wasn't real. Because I'd never experienced something like that that was so so unique and so real and so I didn't I couldn't figure out why I was here and then once I realized it was a dream I just couldn't stop thanking God for a dream like that for for being able to experience that and and I guess on top of that like I felt like because that's been my number one fear you know is you know because I feel like I'm not good enough to go and I've never you know I've been I don't want to say a Christian. I've been, I believed in God my whole life, and it hasn't been because of church or anybody telling me to. I just, I just know He's real, and knowing He's real, but believing that you're not good enough is difficult. And 
and I felt like I wasn't good enough for so long, and so I felt like that dream was for me to know that I am good enough.